Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time around, it is my review of the 2003 comedy sequel, American Wedding. Now, American Wedding is the third film in the American Pie franchise, and this is the first film in the series that I legitimately didn't care for. It's an acquired taste. I, For some people, they have an acquired a taste for it, and they enjoy it quite a bit. I'm not one of them, though. There are some scenes in it that I do like, and there's some concepts that I found I found to be interesting and, and, and worthwhile, but it's just not a very satisfying slice of, of entertainment. It's directed by a guy named Jesse Dillon, and prior to this, he did some music videos and the film How High, and How High is not a great movie, but it's a fun film. And I think that made him a little bit better suited for directing an American Pie movie than the previous director of American Pie 2. Because that guy just did like a rom-com and a pretty bad one at that. How High is closer to the target audience than Say It Isn't So. So I, I think Dylan's direction actually is pretty decent. I, I, I think it's actually a step up from what the franchise had uh, in the previous installment, you can definitely see some attempts here to be different visually. It doesn't look like the same film anymore. It, it doesn't look like, oh, we're just trying to capture the exact same look as the first movie. It actually has a different uh, uh, visual style and flair. And it leads to the film having some really nice looking shots at times. I would say... At this point in time, this is definitely the best looking film in the series because it definitely felt like there was more of an attempt to modernize and to utilize the pretty significant budget, which was $55 million, to really enhance the overall look of the film. Uh, and I, I felt visually it, it tended to pay off. It didn't look like a TV movie anymore, something you would catch on basic cable. Like It looked like an actual theatrical uh, event film and it really showed when it comes to the lavish sequences uh, during the, the wedding and even the the opening uh, uh, scene at at uh, at the restaurant and various other sequences throughout the film I think it's actually pretty nice looking film visually uh, the nightclub scene is another uh, 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 well shot sequence there's a good amount of variety when it comes to uh, zooms, pans, different sort of camera angles. It's not uh, something that's too rigid in that regard. And it, it really makes for a film that is a lot more visually appealing and a lot less bland visually as, as the previous two installments. So I think... One of the more consistently decent things about the film is the direction by Jesse Dillon. And if you look at what he did after this, like Kicking and Screaming, for instance, you definitely see a guy who has a, has a decent amount of talent, and it's definitely on display here. Now, the screenplay by Adam Hers, I really think Adam needed to take a step aside. I, I think he needed to step away from this franchise because his approach and his way of writing these characters, it was already getting stale in part two and it, it's, it's downright moldy in an American wedding, except for maybe a few pieces of the pie that, that aren't ruined by mold. I like the idea of, it focusing on Jim and uh, Michelle's wedding. There's a lot of charm to that. Uh, you root for them. You want them to get married because the, you want them to be the happy couple because they're such an endearing duo. And the script still maintains that throughout. And Jim and Michelle are definitely the, the biggest uh, uh, and, and best aspects of, of, of the script story-wise. Um, other than maybe Stifler's arc, because Stifler's arc 
I legitimately liked as well because of the fact that you actually see some growth with this character, which is something you didn't see previously. So you have a different dynamic now with Stifler where he is actively being in essence, uh, uh, ignored and, uh, left behind by his group of friends. They don't want him to be involved with the wedding. They don't want him to be there because of how volatile, volatile he is and, and, and how he tends to just mess everything up. And I feel the script did a good job actually making you kind of feel for the, the, the total dickhead that is Stifler. And it provided him with moments where he could actually show different sides of him where he would actually help Jim learn how to dance. He did the whole dance off thing at the gay bar, which then made it so uh, Jim could get the, the, the dressmaker to agree to do uh, his wife's dress. And he screws up and he ruins the wedding initially because he was selfish and was going after Cadence and didn't think things through and killed all the flowers. But then he goes the extra mile to make things right in the end. And yeah, you genuinely see Stifler is more than just a one dimensional character in this film. So I really appreciate that part of the script, but you get more of the same stuff with the other supporting characters. Uh, Kevin and Paul, they don't, it doesn't really seem there's a lot of development with them. They're just kind of there doing the same shtick. You have a new girl that's brought in and Cadence, who is uh, Michelle's sister. So there's something uh, a bit intriguing with that. Um, but they spent a lot of that with this whole... I would kind of love triangle between Finch and, and Stifler. And on one hand, it is kind of funny to see Stifler um, get stiffed by his own persona when Finch is acting like him and, and, and uh, taking away uh, Cadence's uh, uh, affection and, and, um, interest in him by being stifler but that only goes so far and i just didn't buy stifler and cadence or honestly I, I didn't buy that whole romance it just didn't it didn't really uh mesh for me and you have a lot of stuff involving uh the flaherty's Mary and Harold, then that was just very typical and just generic to me. You had some other stuff involving uh, um, Jim's grandmother, and of course, at least a whole scene where Stifler bangs Jim's gram grandma, and you're like, oh, okay, you know. So, and there's a lot more raunch in this one, and a lot more gross out humor. And that did not work at all for me in this script. Like the whole scene where Stifler literally eats dog shit. Like that scene was just pure cringe. And I didn't laugh at all. I was just cringing for all the wrong reasons. Because I was just like, this scene is so poorly done. This is so lazy. Oh, he literally eats shit. Ha 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 ha. And... There's a lot of stuff like that. Just very cheap attempts at gags. Like even the opening scene uh, in the restaurant where it's just uh, under the table fellatio that goes wrong. Once again, you see Jason Biggs's ass. And it just didn't have the same flavor as it did the second time around, let alone the first time. And the wedding angle, like that was also very generic and kind of been there, done that with the soul drama involving it and felt dragged out and stretched out beyond uh, the, the, the point where 
it is able to maintain any sort of consistent integrity. And it was, it was just one of those screenplays where it legitimately read like, we don't necessarily know what we're going to do with this. We just are contractually obligated. We need to do another American pie. Why not have Jim and Michelle get married and then just kind of try to figure things out along the way. And let's be grosser, let's be raunchier, let's do this and that. And there's one critic who mentioned how never before have they seen a film that's trying so hard to be so raunchy come across so stale. And that's honestly how I feel about American Wedding when it comes to its script. The best parts of this film involve just sweet, heartfelt moments of character depth or just moments of uh, that feel genuine that remind you of, of the heart that the first film had or the heart that parts of the second film had uh, the, the gross out raunchy sex humor at this point just really has worn thin. And I mean, to the point where you got stuff with, this whole scene where Jason Biggs and Stifler, it looks like they're in a three way gang bang with some dogs, uh, or actually it's a four way gang bang with some dogs. You have a whole scene with, with the dogs, uh, banging a sex toy. You have this whole extended long, just over, uh, extended and just boring scene involving these two strippers that just goes on for a million years. And I, I did watch the unrated version, so maybe in the theatrical cut it's shorter, but it it probably isn't that much shorter. It's probably the same sort of thing as, as the extended long scene with the girls who are trying... Uh, who are messing with the the boys by acting like they're lesbians. And it was just, yeah, it was just, it felt like this was a completely unnecessary entry in the series. And tonally, it just felt off in comparison to uh, the, even the other two uh, films that, that began uh, the franchise. The cast is trying. I mean, this cast is still good. They still have chemistry. They still work well with one another. Definitely missing a lot of the other key players, though. Um, So that's also something that doesn't help the film. I mean, Chris Klein's not here. You don't have Mena Savari. You don't have uh, um, a lot of the other people that were in the first two. You don't have Tara Reid. So you just have Jason Biggs, Sean William Scott, Allison Hannigan, Eddie K. Thomas, Thomas Ian Nicholas. Uh, Eugene Levy has more screen time as Jim's dad, but it just seems like he's not given a whole lot to work with. So it's not really that good. Uh, you have newcomers like January Jones as Cadence, who's fine, but this, the screenplay didn't give her the best role. To, to work with, so it only goes so far. Uh, Deborah Rush and Fred Willard, they're okay as the Flaherty is, but it's another thing where the script is just giving them a lot of very just generic, typical, been there, done that sort of stuff with the with the in-laws. Um, Eric Allen Kramer was fun as Bear, the, 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 the guy who... Um, is a patron at the gay bar who befriends Stifler. Uh, I thought he was pretty funny actually, and, and had his own bit of charm and was enjoyable when it comes to the scenes that he's in. Jennifer Coolidge is Stifler's mom, just there for another cameo. Uh, another uh, bit of fan service where she shows up at the end and, and Finch bangs her again. I guess you don't actually see them bang, but you know, she's like, I got a room, let's go. And it's just as scintillating and funny as it was the, the, the second time around, uh, which wasn't really that scintillating or funny, at least not to me personally. And yeah, it just, it did. It just felt like if the second film was sloppy seconds, 
<laughs> like this was a distant third, like a, a like a, a very uh, 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 sloppy third base, you know that kind of thing. And and I really do blame the script. I think that at this point in time, these characters didn't really feel like there was a whole lot for them to do or not a lot of growing for them to do not much in depth. And Adam hurts. It just seems like so much time had gone by it. Like, yeah, he worked on the second film, but it just seems like he wasn't really, even though he did a good job with the first film and it, it didn't seem like he really evolved that much as a writer and got considerably better. So it just felt like he was, really holding this franchise back at this point. And, and, and it's very evident when you look at American reunion, when they had new writers and different people who were, who were able to add a fresh perspective to things. And it was considerably better. So, but the cast, they, they do what they can with it. And uh, Sean William Scott, like he's still obnoxious and annoying as Stifler, but, there's a certain extra added bit of likability to his character in this because of the fact that you see him actually learn and, and realize that he's being too much of a jackass and he actually does something about it and grows as a character. And it really does add to uh, uh, the film. And I would say, Really, his performance in this, interestingly enough, is is the best one uh, out of uh, all of the uh, uh, main performers because he's given the best arc. Uh, Jason Biggs, I mean, his arc is just the kind of a similar thing as all the other arcs in the previous films. Oh, I, I don't want to commit, or I'm scared of, 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 of screwing things up. And then he comes to the realization that as long as he has his friends around, he's never going to screw up because they're always, they will always be there to, to help him. And that's a nice message and all, but it's, it's, it just seems like it's the same kind of thing that you already got in the other two, but with like just a little bit of a, a minor difference. And yeah, that's just, that's a good way to sum up the film. It's just a lot of just the same old, same old. The cinematography, though, by Lloyd Ahern, I thought was actually pretty good. It's a nice looking film. The editing by Stuart Pape, I thought, also thought was was fine. It definitely wasn't pathetic by any means. The music by Christoph Beck. I mean, you can't really say anything about it. There's not really a signature note to the score. Once again, it was another film where the main focus was on the songs for the soundtrack, and those songs are good. It's got a good soundtrack. All, all, all three of the films at this point had good soundtracks full of licensed tracks. Um, the pacing, I feel it's honestly more the same as the second film because of the fact that there's these jokes and these scenes that go on way too long. They go on way past their expiration date. And yeah, there's just not really a lot of consistent or, or strong conflict throughout. Yeah, there's a wedding that's happening. And you got stuff like Michelle doesn't know how to write her vows and asks um, Jim's dad for help. And you've got some other things that are going on in terms of drama involving the wedding you, you, and you got a lot of attempts to try to have gross out humor again, like when Jason Big shaves his pubes and they fly out the window and they wind up on the wedding cake. And, you, you know, it, it's just one of those things where I can see what they're trying to do with this film. I can see where they're going, but it just feels like they're going backwards. And the older these characters get the sadder it is that they're still doing these teen sex comedy shenanigans, you know, they're adults and it's still like, they're still massive fuck ups and they're still, you know, thinking with what's in between their legs and all this other stuff. It's just, and I see 
the 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 moments of growth with some of these characters but then they just go back on it which is a trend with this franchise at this point that is pretty troubling it's like why can't these characters just actually grow and have significant growth why do they have to just keep going backwards or you know you have to keep bringing them back to square one to where they were in the first film it seems rather lazy and uninspired um but yeah it, it's just one of those sequels that i definitely feel is, is in the realm of weak weak pretty forgettable not that funny uh and in a lot of ways just felt pretty tacked on like even the wedding thing you could have done that like in the in in the fourth film the fourth film could have been the third movie uh you could combine the reunion aspect and the wedding all into one and instead of just having the wedding be its own separate storyline and separate film you could have done that and it would have been just as effective if you ask me if not even more so because there's just there's not a lot of ingredients here that are really that delicious or delectable or or uh, sweet. There's a lot of bitter ingredients with this particular sequel. And if the second film was like a, a, a stale leftover piece of pie that has like a day or two maybe left before it goes bad, this is a slice of pie that's gone bad already. And it's already moldy and needs to be thrown in the trash. But there's nothing else left in the fridge and you're starving. So you pick the pieces of mold off and 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 eat it. And it, it it's 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 not good, but it it's somewhat filling like it, it'll do the job. Like if you need to if you need to kill some time, you could definitely kill some time with this and you could do a lot worse when it comes to killing your time than American Wedding. But you can also do a lot better. So, yeah, that's just my thoughts on American Wedding. And till next time, thanks for watching, and I'll see you later. See ya.